All right, here we go. Talk about PDR Canada, the recap, and then we're going to talk about the a technique that Don is pretty known for a trademark. Two things that I, I, when I think of Don Kavanaugh, I think of blending and body lines. That's what I think about, you know? I mean, I know you're good at a lot of the things, but you know what? We'll talk about that, and it's, you know, coming up. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Toledo, your host on Dent Time PDR, a podcast about PDR training, tutorials, interviews, and much more. So get something to eat, drink, and start pushing. It's time to listen. Hey! Did you say you're, you're, you you thanked me for some kind words? Is that what you said? Yeah, man. That's so <laughs> nice of you. <laughs> I cut Don off. You guys, you guys didn't hear that edit. It was edited, so, you know, you didn't hear Don. He's, he's giving... Anyways... Don, okay, so uh, we're both back. We're both exhausted. We only talked to each other a couple times, and I know you had a busy week. What did you yeah, take away you from too. What did you take away from PDR Canada, dude? I I took away that uh, that's a really a, it seemed like a, um, a an area that there. And I don't even want to say this like this, but it, it seemed like they were really uh, divided uh, when we got there. The group I'm just talking about when, you know, I, I felt like there's a lot of crossed arms that first morning. I didn't even talk to you about this, but I was going to. And then as the hours clicked on, the, the arms were uncrossing. And pretty soon they're in the open position. Pretty soon everybody's laughing and high-fiving and learning so much. And I just... I thought I come around with one word and I think about camaraderie and, and, and how that really changed. And I felt, I felt the change, didn't you? It was just really something that was well needed up there. So I came away with, with really a lot of gratitude to all the guys for opening their hearts to, you know, new ways of thinking and actually being friends with your neighbor, being a dent guy versus not, you know, just, yeah. just really, you know, just being open. We can learn so much more through each other than fighting each other right yeah. you know yeah. i i i agree with you i think um uh, in the beginning there were some people kind of really uh wouldn't say doubting they're just kind of like they they were they look like, look i'm here but you know i'm not really here to hear you lecture i'm here to learn like dense you know what i mean and right i, I mean i'm saying that's exactly what they're saying but i did get i i do feel like i was in the same boat feeling with you and then all of yeah. a sudden you could see you know, almost like light bulb, light bulbs come on everybody. <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah, that's what I saw too. It, it really, here, here, and nothing against you Canadians, okay? Anybody who's listening, I know you follow me. Zero. And we follow, we, we love the Canada, Canadians, okay? Absolutely. I love Canada. The first time ever me coming to Canada, I've never been there. And I just want to say thank you very much for inviting me and, and meeting all the Canadians out there. And we'll talk about even a woman Canadian PDR tech. Okay. Yeah. She's around her fifties. I think I'm not, you know what? I don't even want to say that for maybe late forties. I think she's, she's 29 and <laughs> yeah, she's a sweetheart. Go. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Very nice woman. And, um, we'll talk about her a little bit later and I'd love to get her on the podcast, but I think that'd be cool. My thing is too, Don, and we, you can chime in anytime. So don't, don't think about of cutting course. me off. You can do a Daniel Grom on me, dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, and again, not insulting Canada, but the PDR industry to me, it felt like how we used to be ten years ago. The, the thinking, the thinking. Okay, agreed. Not, not, agreed. I wouldn't say just techniques. I'm talking the thinking. Um, so, what's your thoughts on that? I agree 100. percent I think I think the the close mindedness that we had, and how we you know didn't want to you know our neighbor to see our tool you know that maybe we were using or uh, an idea or just about anything. And the problem is, is we've suppressed it so much that even you know ten people we go meet on the street don't even have even heard about it before because we've been so busy with our. Our, our, our backwards thinking and I was doing it myself for 20 years so I'm not knocking this it's just the way it was and it just has to be a new a new game plan in town and uh, and that's to help each other and build each other up through camaraderie and, and, and science of doing bigger larger smashes and dents and unlocking things and showing people how to yeah. you know market and and 
and just be a freaking boss out there. You know what I mean? You said something really great. You said something that you can be the best dent technician in the world, but if you don't know how to market yourself, you, you're not going. You're, you're not. You, you're not going to be very. You know. You're not going to be very successful at it. You know. You might enjoy what you do, but you're. You're not going to. You know. Really reap the, the rewards of. Of, there's so many aspects of being a business owner. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We have I, to help each other get to those levels. What I thought. I mean, here's where I where I got my impression of that, Don. Like about Canadians about ten years. And again, I'm not trying to be insulting. I'm just going by what I observed. Okay. Yeah. From the seminar, and it, I'm not talking ten years behind techniques. I'm not talking about no, that. no. They're awesome tech guys yes. up there. Yeah. Some of the best dudes. Yes. I've made lifetime friends. I'm sure. I, I'm just, I'm uh, referring to the networking. So that yeah. that's the main part. Of, uh, I was uh, very observant of, and and talking to other individuals, and then I was also observant that they weren't very up to par on tools either because they didn't know half the tools. So well, not say half, but they, they, they didn't have in their arsenal. They probably heard of them, but they didn't own a lot of them. Sure. Sure. No and those will be real game changers for them. But in all retrospect and to put a feather in their cap, I remember probably five, we've had this conversation many times, but five, six, eight years ago, I thought I had every tool that I would ever need, again, that ever even grace this earth, that I can do everything with what I had. But what I didn't realize is that I can work with a different type of tool with the newer technologies and skill and the, and the, the leverage points of some of these different contraptions that are coming out that are making our job so much easier that I'm making cleaner repairs. I'm making, you know, I'm not as fatigued. I'm not, you know, there's so many things that I, I'm so glad that I opened my mind to it and didn't get caught in my ways six, eight years ago because I'd probably be stuck there. You know, yeah. you just got to always open and be open and open and, and, and look at going to, go to MTE, look at all the tools, feel them, you know, well, play with them, go, you know, just listen to all these podcasts. It's just, you got to stay open to all of it. Now, now again, on their defense too. Okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to put the ball on, you know, I'm going to be on their side. Okay. On this too. And Don, you 100% agree, but yeah. the, the, the exchange rate is crazy stupid, dude. So, I can understand that, hey, they're going to be paying pretty much 30% to 40% more on top of what the tool value is, okay? Right. They did say that. Yeah, and that, you know, that will set you back a little bit, you know? And you're not just going to go buy a tool because you love tools. Now you're really choosy picky about what tools you should invest in. You know what I mean? We call it tools are investments. They're not spending money. It's investing money. When you buy tools, right. that's where I agree with you 100%. But in their defense, and I do agree, you know, the, the exchange rate is just stupid over there. It, um, it is. It is. I, I, I really can't even believe how, how different it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, could, I couldn't believe it either. It's like, I, I think, uh, what is it? Other countries across the world have a better <laughs> exchange rate than, <laughs> they do. than unfortunately Canada. So, yeah. but the, the people in Canada, here's what I noticed too. Every time I walked across, I needed to cross a street or I needed to go by a crosswalk or something. Every single Canadian stopped. Now probably you Canadians are like, shoot, I wouldn't have stopped. But Right. No, but, you're talking about when they were in vehicles. Right? Yeah. They stop yeah, they, they, they yeah stopped. no matter where we were. Yes, they did. I wasn't used they to that. They were so kind. They were so kind. Yeah. And opening doors and just really great, great people. I mean, the 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 Sarah, the the, the family, the the Sarah family, Tom and Tanya and the kids, they're just just wonderful, top notch family. Just a, a a blast to hang out with and and get to know better. And and it trickles down. I mean, Dom did something pretty amazing doing this there. I think all the guys. I heard a lot of the local guys that came that said, "Hey, they're just thanking him over and over and over again for doing it." So. I, I, I really love nice. Dominic and Ter- and Ta- Tanya. They, yeah. you know, you can tell da- Tanya is like my wife. She, you can tell that she runs the show, but doesn't say she runs the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, 
Dom looks all super tough and yada yada, but it's the wife that really runs it. But we all know that we we all have those type of wives. But I here's the deal. Um, let's be honest here. Dom, Dom, this is Dom's first rodeo, and yeah. for him be having a first event like this and it, in Canada, it, it, as far as yeah, I know, and as far as he said, this was the first type of a seminar ever in Canada. Okay. Now I know some guys might have had their own team, you know, seminars or something, but to, sure. to invite anybody in Canada or anybody outside of Canada to come, uh, I think it was it was fantastic. Um, Very cool. The venue. What do you think about the venue where it was at? Venue worked out really well, didn't it? We were, I mean, we were in a really nice hotel, and then all you had to do was walk across the parking lot, and you were in the in the convention center. Uh, well, it wasn't a convention center actually; it was a uh, not that big, uh, well, kind of a community center type of thing. And we were, we were, had a really good area and it worked, it worked out well. We had a private room, um, a few of those, a few of those days too. And that was nice. And when we were doing our speeching, speaking and talking and things like that. So I, th- I thought very it was, nice. yeah, I thought it was perfect. It was, okay. You guys picture the most biggest, biggest giant Metroplex thing. And you can imagine it has a swimming pool, a wave pool, 10 ice hockey rinks inside of it. Two ice rinks, yeah. I mean, it, I'm not exaggerating. A football field, there are friggin' basketball courts, and, and it was just like, it was the steroids Olympic stadium inside of there, man. It was just ridiculous. But um, everything. Cafeteria. it was good. <laughs> yeah, cafeteria. It was roomy. Uh, it, was, it, it was good. I mean, technically, this could have been a mobile tech expo venue if it, if, if it if they had something like that, it was that big. We were talking about that, weren't we? Wouldn't it be great to like buy like four or five tools at Mobile Tech Expo in the morning and take your time and go from from place to place, and then just run your tools back to your room? You know, you could you could literally walk back to your room in ten minutes and have your tools dropped off, and maybe take a little snoozer for a half hour, and then run right back over yeah. instead of you know the the, the I, I think that I thought that last venue was really tough on all of us we were spread out so much well, you know what, at, at towards the end of the podcast we'll 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 get to that part okay we'll yeah. we'll talk about that of course of course uh, let's let's talk about the team that we worked with okay uh, Gene Fetty Jean look i know T and uh, Gene Fetty obviously you did a great job too don i'm saying but Gene Fetty and Jean Jean really surprised me, man. Like, yeah, he set it up like pretty good. Did you hear his his? Uh... I missed. I missed the first like ten minutes of it. Oh, so dude! Oh, I he... was so bummed. He goes, "You missed that." I go, oh, "Dude, I'm so sorry." He yeah. he set it up, dude. I mean, he set it up really, really well. I mean, he came prepared, and he had me sitting down, thinking nothing but what he was talking about, and it right. made sense. It was a different. You talked about attitude, and if I could just uh, take a little piece of, of the book here, of his page, out of his playbook. You now he said, you know, if you're pushing hail, and and you uh, and you get out of bed and you have a good attitude, you're you're happy to push. You're you're pushing higher pace. You know what I mean? But if someone calls and said, hey, the dog's got to go to the vet. Oh yeah, that's when I walked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was good part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could either think of it like as a really bad thing, and then be all bummed and go push slower and lose money, or you could go, "Hey, I'm making money, so I can afford to take the dog to the vet." You know what I mean? It was all about attitude, and he made some really good points, and and I I was very surprised because it really does. And he was talking about efficiency, you know. Um, so I thought it was good. Gene Fetty nailed it on the sales dude like he did a fantastic job and that fact i took another i play i took a play out of his page book today so i learned something <laughs> you know? awesome gene is such a good guy and john and yourself and everybody just really brought it i i, I thought it was really good stuff I, I really really thought the whole thing went off very well and it was amazing how one thing rolled into the other two and yeah. In a really good, seamless way, I I thought you know between the practical and the, the you know the, the hands on and academical and back and forth. The, the each, no, and you you and I know we've we've been to some big major uh, seminars and they are damn good uh, and yeah. all of them are yeah. good. Uh, but this for for 
let's say let's just say let, let's let's admit this was not a giant seminar okay this was not a big you know whoa you know blah 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 it it was yeah. it was exactly and more than what you anticipated to be you know mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was smooth like you said very very fast pace but in a good way right it yeah. there was no really downtime to get bored that's that's all i gotta no. say it kept everybody hopping and thinking and and bopping around. It was good. It was really good. I thought it was, um, I thought it was well, very well executed. And I know Dom and, and, and Tanya both were very happy with, uh, how, how it all went, which it was, uh, you know, the main goal is to really, you know, know that we touched a lot of dent guys. And I know that we did because everybody was coming up to us. And it was fun how everybody went out. At, well, at least 80% of us went out in the evenings. And I have just as much fun. We talked about this before. I learned just as much when we we're talking like, hey, what was that question you asked? And what did you mean by that? Yeah. You know, yeah. and you're like, well, well, I meant this. You know, you're like, oh, my God, well, that's fantastic. You know, and then four or five other people jump in because everybody's had a beer. And now they're not shy. Yeah. You know, so it's like, hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, like, cool, it's like an after hour recap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Personal, yeah. like one on one recap. You know, hey, what did, what you, did you what did from that? Yeah, what did you mean? Like, you know, I wanted to ask you said something. How many times did you get that? Or, you know, when you were doing that dent, Don, what were you, you know, about where how would you, you know, you were just getting that and that's that's where they get the undivided attention. Like that's where they can they can see see it happening, but then they can personally ask you questions about a specific yeah. topic or, or something that they had to to ask. I am still talking with guys on Messenger every day from it asking me questions about about the buckle and the and unlocking and and the and that deep deep part. you know it's just like it's just so fun to be able to you know help them out and talk about it and yeah. and stuff so so let's cool. let's talk about that and and let, let's just first before we get into yours too like let's give Jean uh, some credit too he did, he did a pretty Absolutely. he did a pretty good nasty dent on the it, it's a, I wouldn't look it's not a crush Okay, it's one of those pain in the arse, dense uh, a pillar, a pillar, a crease going right to the edge, and it's not well, it's six not a light inches one. Inches up from the bottom of the windshield, right a pillar. Picture this guy; it's nasty crease, <laughs> dense, and on a three series, which is only probably a two and a half, three inches of metal, anyways. You know, so yeah. it, it was it was nasty for sure. He did a good job. He did a great job. Now I wasn't there the whole time either um there but um did gene do it do a repair at all or is he just a speaker i'm i'm sorry about that one did, did gene speak at all because i i i had to lay uh, down no. like half the time so no 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 you had you had gone back and but i had stayed there and gene no he didn't he didn't speak at all. we were we were going to do a little bit more oh you know what he did the last day gene did speak again yep Yep. No, yeah, he spoke, but he didn't. He didn't do any dance, right? He didn't do any dance. Oh no, dance. Okay, no, I'm yeah. sorry. Yep, yeah. yep, he didn't do any dance. Uh, um, okay, so let's. First of all, Jean did a great job because it's all about unlocking pressure and using the right tab. And he used a, a, a tab that I never thought I would use. I own it, and you know, to me, it's like the classic tab. You know, he's the Titan tab, yep. and he unlocked it. He was able to show it. And he pretty much glassed the damn thing. So that was all amazing. Yeah. And he did what, an hour? An hour and a half? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. An hour and a half. So yeah. that's what's great. That's what's good about that's sharp, small dance, had. right? <laughs> okay, that's all the yeah. time we had. Yeah. But yeah. It, but that's that's what was great about the seminar is because people were learning dents that they see every day, right? That give them trouble all the time consistently. Right. But if you can get better at finishing, the last 10, 20% of it, that's, that, that makes a whole world of difference. And so yeah. now rolling you into that this, bigger and bigger and bigger dent too, you know, the one, other ones that are eluding you as well. So, yeah, yeah. We, when they, we did the oil can dent too, right. With the PDR, uh, yeah. PDR, uh, power PDR yeah. box, right. Yeah. And that turned out good. Yeah. Um, so let's, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about um, how did, let's, let's, let's walk me through this, Don sharp, yeah. What it was a two inch dent or something across the body line? I don't know how big it was. It it, it was probably more like like three or four. 
okay. um, cause it, cause it went, you know, it's oh, metal in every direction upward and downward and, and, you know, every, every which way, but you know, the crease, the, the area that was really pushed in was that uh, probably about a, about a two and a half, three inch area, but then it went four the other way, you know, vertically, but it was, it was a, it was a good one. It was a good shot. It was under the right front mirror. It was way far in front. Unfortunately, it was an older BMW 3 Series, so I think it was like an 08. I don't know if you guys remember those, but uh, the body volumes are sharp now, but they're actually rounded compared to this son of a bit. It's the, back then in the old, those those times, they were totally pinched. I mean, a total really sharp body line yeah. that actually protruded from the top and the bottom, basically, is how that comes out. And the, the newer ones are, are rounded. They're still sharp, but they're not like that. They're more rounded. But it came out really well. Um, I couldn't get a really great uh, any of, of course, if I was at home, I would have went for my, my Dent Reaper tool probably. And uh, John's new handle <laughs> probably would have been really nice there well, too. Let's talk about that scenario. I don't want to, I want to, I want to really get help these guys get a visual because this is what we're known yeah. for, right? Okay. Of course. Um, let's talk about the Reaper. Like, I can't imagine using Reaper without chewing that up. Like, how are you, how would you protect your tip from not doing, are you hitting it from the outside when you're pushing? Obviously you're, you're knocking some metal down, but how are you not you chewing know, that I, up, putting poke marks in there? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm letting off before I chew it. You know, it's, it's, it's pinpoint, you know, really seeing myself before I, um, you know, crack the paint or even make a little bit of a mark with the tip of the tool. But it's still, it's so sharp, I can get it in there and it digs. I'm not worried about it slipping, right? Yeah. And I've got it spooned out now where it's it's in a situation where, um, you know, it's not that deep, you know, it's still deep as hell, but it's nothing like the shelves that it had on before I started poking because I actually hammer out a lot of that and blend all that out. I, I was probably hammering. So, so you, you, I got it. So before you even pick up that tool, you're, oh, you're, yeah. you're releasing oh, metal yeah. flow from the outside, right? Can the metal flow go back I towards was. the end? So, yeah. so yeah. it'll naturally want to pop back up. Well, yeah. Yep. I was totally taking all those buckles and different things away. And sometimes it's just the opposite too. So, so don't feel like that. That's the that end yeah. all, you know, end all. Cause a lot of times you'll see a dent and it, you, the last thing you'd want to do is go after those grounds. You know what I mean? But in this situation, it was so deep already, and I really wanted to relieve that, and I wanted to drop those shoulders down. And if I wouldn't have taken care of those buckles on top and bottom, I would have been fighting those two buckles the whole repair. I had to get rid of them and, and just move forward on getting the depth of that dent you know, yeah, out and, of there. And so. that's why I'm trying to set, set this up for, is, is that yeah. that's the answer we want people to visualize is why did you do one thing or the other? And that's exactly what John, uh, uh, Don is, is referring to. Listen, first of all, you, you're saying you've got to determine is it, what, what's more dominant, right? Is it more crown dominant or is it more low dominant? Right. And that's what you're going to try to figure out first. Right. And in this case, it was more crown dominant. So you were blending down the crowns as much as you could without, now you're not trying to blend every crown down. You're just trying to release the crown to, so the metal the, the the inside will will come up with with your tool better, right? It, exactly. And I actually went past its point. I I I went past the crown pointing. I went in then especially around like an inch on both sides of that body line and I just continued to really shallow that out and try to make it as as, as like a you know bottom of a cup or a spoon or, or I think I heard Kaz use the word spoon, spoon it out, spoon it out. And that's exactly what you kind of want to do. You really want to make that super, super shallow and make those shelves not as bad, even though it was still a super crater dent. Um, it didn't have the drop shelf right on the shoulder. The shoulders weren't there anymore because I had to make it that much bigger. So yeah. now instead of a two and a half inch dent, that was the impact zone. I now have about a three and a half to four inch dent um, along that body line. And I've taken down a lot more metal than I ever even wanted to. That was completely fine before I started. I went into the good metal so I could get some release um, on that body line. So, so you, so you, you're, you're shallowing it out. So that's, see, that's super important. So you, you basically, you're getting rid of the, 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 the hard sidewall around the, around the, the pit of it is that what you're saying correct correct yeah now we we were mentioning the that, let's not confuse our listeners here we were mentioning if you had the reaper that's what you would use 
Don didn't have yeah. the Reaper. He had a limited, <laughs> no. limited set of tools. What were you? What did you use to to start bringing that up? I ended up, I ended up using like three or four different things, and um, none of them were completely ideal. Uh, but what I basically ended up with was a, um, and I don't even know what tool manufacturers. Probably a CarePoint tool. It had a T handle on it. It was almost like a tri pick that I would normally use for a, like a fender dent. Uh, type of thing. Oh, I you think know, like I think it, old, I think it was a blend tool, wasn't it? Was it, it, it maybe it was. Was it? Did it have a rubber handle on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah maybe it was. was a blend. You know what? I think it was blend. Now that you say that, but it was an adjustable handle. Yep. And um, so, thank God for that. And um, I was able to get, you know, basically I was on my knees and I shoved myself underneath that mirror, and then my tool was behind me, and I'm trying to get my face inside that dent. And, uh, you know, just basically you know, read it. And uh, so it was it was a little bit tough because the angle of my, my rod being that it was up on the front of that door and those mirrors on those doors, you guys are about a foot back from the front edge of the door. And it was in front of the of the of the, you know, mirror. So unfortunately, the angle of the tool was, you know, at, at quite a bit of <laughs> quite a bit of an angle. It wasn't going straight down by any stretch. It was. It was as much as I could get out of the tool to be able to, you know, get any torque on that tool at all. So it wasn't wasn't ideal to, to say the to say the least. But we, we we pulled it off with using probably four or five different tools, going after little bits and pieces of it. Yeah, of I noticed one. The people were really looking at to see how you were going to unlock that, you know, and what did you have to do to get it. And then once nothing not no disrespect to you but once people saw that yep. you got it unlocked they're like oh man yep. he's got it now you know what i mean like, <laughs> yep yep it's like, yep, damn, yep. Like, damn exactly. I mean, they want to see you struggle a little longer but you got it and, and yeah that'd be yeah, honest like you, 20 you got go 25 ahead. people watching that it turned into 10 you know yeah because once, <laughs> <till the end. laughs> once once they saw you unlock it they they, they were all dead guys right and they're like this motherfucker's yeah. got it now dude so, you know <laughs> And, and it was it was fun because because everybody was saying, "Hey, can, hey, hey, hey this one, you know, just it's okay, man. You don't have your own tool. It, it, it's fine. It, you know, you know, it ain't gonna come off. <laughs> uh -huh. You know." Uh -huh. So it was funny, and and it, that actually pumps me up. You know, it's like, of course it's gonna come out. Don't don't be alarmed. We'll figure we'll figure it out. You know. So, but it worked out fine at the end of the day. Yeah, so that was all that mattered. Well, Don, you did a hell of a job on that thing. You glassed it, and then we were, you did an, uh, you did one on the front fender too, right? Like a smash on that body yeah. line again yeah. on the front fender. Yeah, yeah, and, we put in a couple and, good smashes. In and you were too, using a so. doodah. Doodah, yeah, with that one, with the really bad one that I took the big mallet to and yeah. smashed it through those two body lines. I used the doodah, and you know what's amazing was, and, and I think that Barry's going to have a lot coming his way, um, I did a survey and there was 30 people in the room and I said, how many people have a doodah? Two people. Dom had it cause it was there and we used it. And one other person. I know. I, I that's why I, that's, it, that's we where, like, what? well, that's, what? that's where I got both ears at, right? Uh, either they didn't know about it or they did know about it, but they couldn't afford to get it over there because they just didn't want to pay that percentage up higher. I know but they God. didn't realize what it does. Yeah, exactly. But that's what Either. I'm saying. I mean, yeah. what at certain at a certain price, you know, and I'm not talking about tool price, but what's it going to take for you to actually, you know, be vested into the tools that you purchase, you know, because yeah, you have it's going to cost in yourself. It's going to cost more money. I I get it. I I get yeah. it. But there are some very important tools that are saving time. And Don, every yeah. week I talk about tools e either through PDR Tool Time on their, their group or I talk about on Dent Time, right, on the uh, Facebook page. There, every week there's something new that has saved or shaved some seconds, minutes. You know, yeah. I, I, you add all those up throughout the year. It can be hours. You know what I mean? It's, it's amazing. You know what's really great and what – this is a gift that we have. I think we take it for granted and we don't think about it. And I'm trying to get – some of my really good pals that are being a little bit cheap. And I say this with respect because I know they got families and houses. You know, they got, we all have so many things to spend our money on, of course. But when I, when I try to tell them and get them in a different mindset, it's like, okay, let's say you were a printer. 
and you were you needed to buy paper every single month to print your printing you know materials on you would have a situation where you were spending 20 30 grand a month in paper well depending on the size of the company i'm just making a point but let's say you're selling um you know pop you know you're gonna have to buy the pop to sell the pop right if you're selling liquor same thing if you're selling computers on and on and on but what i'm saying is we are in such a um a wonderful business because once we really own our tools and we have our skill set other than our shop and overhead we really aren't having to reinvest and and therefore that's what should give us the opportunity to actually do that and look at these tools as an investment in ourselves and our career and in our bodies and and just everything else that's going to then follow suit so we should really be investing because we're very lucky that we don't it doesn't take us money to make money so i've always had this terrible thing in my head if I buy a $200 tool, I say, hey, it paid for itself the first time I used it, you know? And guess what? I've used that tool 100 times, yeah. you know? So, therefore, that tool really has paid for itself 100 times over. And you, it's just a mindset. You know, oh, I got enough tools. I got this, I got that. It's betterment, guys. Invest in yourself. Yeah, I, I can't agree, Don. Uh, listen, we are friggin' professional, paintless, dent removal technicians you need it's your responsibility to stay up to date perfect get better learn more just be the best you can be and if you have just a quarter of that passion you're going to you're going to invest in tools because it's not spending money, it's investing money. Especially Absolutely. and it's going back to your it's going back into your company. You get to write it off. And at the same time, you're benefiting it because it's gonna make you better, faster, and cleaner. That's all I gotta say about it. I mean that's that's how I look at it. And because I think Perfect. that way, I get the results that way. And that's just the way it, it that's the way I look at it. And you, you shouldn't look at it any other way. This is your career. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, and, Best let, in let, you. Let's stop, like, ticky-tacking, like, oh, I just, and we're the most cheapest guys out there. <laughs> and it just, it just, it blows me away, man. It really does. Yeah, so. it, it really does. I, I've had so many people reach out to me and say, you know, I just don't understand the um, these newer tools and these new techniques and all this stuff. I've been doing this for so long. I'm so good at doing, you know, already, and I, and I do really good work, and I can't make it any better. So why the hell should I invest in something like this, you know? I, got, I was getting it a lot at after our Stainliner event in Minneapolis here at Dancraft. We were we were having people like, oh, I don't even believe it. Why didn't you sign up? You know, why didn't you come? Well, I don't even I don't even own any Stanliner tools, and I just I, I just can't believe that they're any better than what's out there. And and it's funny it, they are, they, you know, and, and and so is a lot of these other things coming to suit. They there's just betterment in the um, the body, you know, the yeah. the you know moving stuff so cleanly, you know, like the Stanliner thing. We were bringing up big, massive creases and big buckles and things. Everybody in the room. Okay. Uh, 46 of us or whatever. And we had a situation where um, everybody was bringing it up so cleanly and we weren't hearing any tapping and hammering. I forget who it was. They said, isn't this weird that we're bringing up such massive crunches with these tools and we're not even using any tap downs or hammers or blending. We're just bringing it up in the masses without any spoking or stitching. There is something to these tools, guys. And there really, it, there is a betterment and it's it's longevity too. I'm getting a little old. I mean, I, I just want to have it, you know, easy around the body as well. And when you're using these types of tools, you're you're expediting your repairs very quickly. That doodah, yeah. I brought that freaking fender up within about three to five minutes or something, and everybody was like, "What the hell?" Yeah. You know. And it wasn't me. It wasn't me at all. It was the damn tool. You know. Who, I mean, you, I, you, you uh, know, you know who's going to get better quick. Who? The guys coming into it right now, the younger guys, mm -hmm. the younger mm -hmm. techniques. You know who you're going to start seeing? People that you don't know who are going to start yep. doing these amazing repairs. Yep. And Absolutely. they're not using the classic rods. They're not using the classic 
techniques that everyone's used to seeing and doing, right. you're going to start seeing people do dance with different types of tools faster, better, cleaner. Okay. Because All these glues. Tell, and that, everything. Like, tell that to oh my, my students. Tell that to my students. I give them, listen, I, I don't force anything down their throat. I say, here, this is what this tool can do. They're so open-minded, they'll, they'll try it. There's no blockade sure. of them going, well, I'm so used to doing it this way. That's what sets you apart. You're thinking, okay? And I'm telling you, mark my words, five years from now, maybe less, three to 10 years from now, from sure, you're going to see people you've never heard of who've been doing it less than five years who are doing amazing repairs with, with different tools like stand liners, like you know, um, different types of glue pulling setting, you know, all, uh, whatever it is, it's going to be something new that you're, you wouldn't, you would not say, Oh, I'm not going to use that. Cause that thing doesn't look like it's going to work. And all of a sudden right. you start seeing people doing those repairs with those things that you thought weren't going to work. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's just always thinking outside the box and and trying these new techniques, but it's just amazing when we can actually move a massive metal versus just the pinpoint spot that maybe we're making a push with, with one of our tools. Yeah. So you look at a pinpoint spot on a, at the tip of a tool, and then you look at a, a like a stand line or a rounded head snake, and you've got all of a sudden you've got a three or four inch area that's actually making your push and your contact on the back of your panel at the exact same time. That's a, you know, probably a half inch wide, it's moving metal yeah. and it's moving it cleanly and it, and it, and you have to see it before you can go, what did I just witness? Because that's, cr that's crazy. Right. Well, you yeah. Know, yeah so. I mean, look at, look at, I think, uh, Marty Runick helped come up with the design with blem tools. It's a, I haven't been able to use it though. I haven't tried it yet. Cause I haven't purchased oh. it yet. I just talked to, uh, Mark today from blem, okay. but okay. that's a, that's a unique tool. And I guess Ryan shut, uh, used it and he said, it's a win. You know, I talked to him I before. Seen it. I, I haven't seen it. It's weird. It's like a wicked looking, curly looking tool. And it goes down the door. Oh, and at first, okay. Ryan Ryan got it. He texted me a photo of his all window breaker. <laughs> right? And, oh, oh, I did too yeah, see this. Yeah. Ryan showed, I think, yes, I think I saw it. Very goofy looking tip yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah. Then he goes, yeah. you yeah. know what? It almost he, looks like a handle, but it's a tip. Yeah, he goes, <laughs> it's the real deal. And you know what? I'm free. I'm all dude. If he says it's a real deal and he says he's doing it, and Marty's who's using it, and he's right. coming out, dude, like hand it over, man. I'm I'm, I'm yep. all about it, man. I'm all my order. for it. So yep. that's gonna cool. be on my on my hit list now. But nice. now we're gonna go into a different subject here, okay? Because I like to keep it rolling. Let's talk about oh oh oh. Well, just to end that part. What I think, and this is a tip for every seminar, what every seminar, no matter if you have, what, I don't care what kind of seminar, if, as long as it's PDR related, you need to have, you need to have like a half a day. I don't know how long you want to take out, but you guys need to do, even ourselves, we're going to do this at Mega Media event. We're going to have a part where there's nothing but showing the new tools and let people do demonstrations and show yeah. what the new tools do and let people see it in person and keep them up to date on new tools. Not Absolutely. just not just that whole go online and look at the tool. No, let's, no, let's no, no. work the tool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let, let's see yeah. how it works. So let's use them. I love that. So that I think everybody should do that in a seminar. So if you're listening and you think about having your seminar, are you already preparing for a seminar? That should definitely be on your agenda. Um, yep. Here's another thing. Okay, let's talk about since we're talking about seminars and events, let's talk about Vegas. Okay. Yep. You said, you know, we all know that, the, and they think they're cha they're definitely changing that. They're not keeping at the old venue. I heard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe they are. I don't know. Shoot, I don't think they are. I, I hope not. I no. thought they heard they got out of it. I heard it was a two year deal, but they got out. But okay. I don't. Know. All right. Yeah. Because why? Because it was you just mentioned earlier. It was why? just two. It was just yeah. It was the bed bugs. It was <laughs> the um, you know everything else that. Oh, that you talk about the that, hotel, right? I'm talking about the hotel and the venue. Everything together just didn't work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just didn't. Just but didn't we, work. like, this isn't bashing on MTE. Okay? No, no, This is, no. right? We're, we just, we're, not, we we're just both. smoother. Yeah. We, we just, we're just giving our, our, our two thoughts. But here's the deal. Yeah. This venue in Vegas, I'm not getting paid for this, guys. I'm just, I'm just telling you because I think it's great when people come to an event 
and this is going to be a first time at Las Vegas, but I'm telling you, it's going to be an all in one and you are, you, you're going to have, you buy tools, you can put them right in your room. You, you want to go back down to the bar? It's right there. You don't have to go anywhere. It's going to feel like the old, was that Casillo Real or what, what, which place was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know right? Real. I think it's even more tighter. It's freaking cool, man. So I'm looking forward to it, man. And you better not say you're going to be doing some hail because I don't care. Even if you guys are doing hail, get out of here, man. Three days is not going to kill you. Yeah, everyone goes home for their for their weekend for their family anyways half yeah, the time. You yeah. know what I mean? So Have them meet you in Vegas. Yeah. And even if you go for one day, you can do, do other things if you don't like the venue. Okay? So you can go do that. I'm looking forward to it, uh, Don. Someone's telling me if you booked your flight right now, which is crazy. I always wait till the last minute, of course, so I can bitch about the prices. But um, if you do it right now, you can get that thing done for like 100, 150 bucks. Just crazy cheap, you know. Was, Round trip uh, ticket, yeah, pretty yeah. much anywhere in the United States. It's like wow. Uh, I, I honestly, even I don't know why you, they, you know, even if I was a hail tech, I'd still book it because I'm like, look, I'm gonna go out there and um, that's even if it's hail, I'll need a break. You know what I mean? Yes. You so. have a great evening, Mike. Thanks for having me on again. I always love to uh, talk to the guys and, and trying to, trying to you know, for me at the end of the day, it's not about Dencraft anymore. It's about putting this PDR cam thing on the map. It just drives me crazy. People walk in and don't know about it. You know, we got, it's got to change. We can do it together, guys, with with all of, all our numbers out there. We, we, we can just do this. If we, we've got this. You know what I mean? And, and I agree what five-year deal you're talking about, Mike. I agree about all these newer guys coming out, they're gonna they're gonna be able to do really really well at it, get it to a quicker level because of stuff like this that's happening. So, thanks for having your podcast and and uh, you know speaking to the masses because it's uh, it's an important thing for yeah. sure. Well, thanks Don again for coming on, man. We'll we'll uh, we'll bring you on sometime in the future when we got another crazy good topic to talk about. So, <laughs> Sounds right. good, man. Talk later. Okay, Don. Over now, guys. Night. Thanks. Okay. You guys too. Bye. All right, before I leave you for good, I just wanted to give a shout out to two more people who left reviews. Dent Dave, love this podcast. I look forward to Dent Time Podcast. I know it will deliver quality content along with some valuable unscripted thoughts. Mike's style for his content is top notch. Keep doing it. Thanks a lot, Dave. I appreciate that, man. Another one is J9. 1605 mike is the og always a great podcast mike covers a lot of different areas of information about the pdr industry so far never gets stale great job mike keep it up hey thanks i appreciate that guys thanks a lot for listening i'll catch you guys on the next one